Hey everyone, today I'm going to be comparing 10 JBL True Wireless Earbuds in various price ranges to help you decide which pair is going to work the best for you. I'll also be running through how to get the most out of your earbuds, some tips and tricks, as well as the custom EQ settings that I like to use. Now, unlike pretty much every audio brand, JBL actually has some structure to their products. So the Wave is their budget range. They also call this Vibe in the US. Tune is the mid-range option and Live is the premium option. And in each range, you get three types of earbuds, a regular bud with no stem, a stem earbud, and a semi-in-ear earbud with no ear tip. The only outlier is the Tua Pro 2 with its pretty unique smart case. But let's start with the Wave range, also known as Vibe. Retail price in Australia, $89, $49 in the US. Now with these buds, you don't get noise cancelling, wireless charging, or multi-point connection. This will be included as you move up in price. But all of the Wave buds have eight hours of battery, 32 hours in total with the case. They have fast charge as well, so put the buds in the case for 10 minutes. You get two hours of playback on the buds. All the cases are also IPX2 water resistant, and this is exclusive to the Wave range and Live Flex for some reason. At least that's all I could find on the JBL website. So the cases are fine for a very light spray of water. So you'll want to avoid getting them wet, but still it's better than nothing. The buds themselves all have an IP54 dust and water resistant rating. Fine for some light dust, splashes of water used in the rain. You just can't submerge the buds in water. And they all use Bluetooth 5.2. So this is going to give you a nice stable connection. And all the buds featured here today in all the price ranges allow you to use one bud at a time, say while you leave the other in the case. And they all work in mono mode as well. So for example, if you're using just the left earbud, you're going to hear the left and right audio channel out of that earbud, not just the left. So you won't miss anything with whatever you are listening to. Now, all of these earbuds only use two microphones when you're on a phone call and the beam and buds let in quite a lot of background noise where the flex actually blocks most of it out. But here's what the microphones will sound like when you're on a phone call. All right, so here is the core quality of the JBL Wave Buds. All right, so here is the core quality of the JBL Wave Beam. All right, so here is the core quality of the JBL Wave Flex. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Now, what's really impressive about these buds is the full-fledged app support you get and the JBL app, one of the best on the market. So you can pretty much customize everything to your liking. So let's run through all the features the app has. So from the top, this is where you can turn on ambient sound control. You can also do this on your earbuds. So this will allow you to hear your surroundings, ambient aware is for general awareness and talk through will focus on voices. The quality of the transparency mode is actually pretty decent. It gets pretty close to the more expensive pairs. The main difference when going up in price is gonna be with occlusion. So this is when you're speaking and like you hear your own voice and it can sometimes have a weird echo and reverb effect. So the wave buds do have a small amount of this. The Flex doesn't have this issue though. They still have the ambient control, but it doesn't really do much since you already get a natural transparency mode since you don't have an ear tip. And like I said, you can set the ambient control to the touch controls. So a single tap will just turn the transparency mode on and a double tap will turn on talk through. So that'll actually bring down the volume of your music so you can talk to someone without taking your earbuds out. If you want to add that into the touch controls though, you do have to sacrifice your volume control. So you can't have everything on there at once. This is an issue with all the earbuds and really shouldn't be an issue in today's true wireless market. But what's great to see, even with the Wave Buds, is the full EQ customization you get. And JBL has one of the best EQs and it's the easiest to use as well. You can save all of your presets in there as well and use them across all your JBL earbuds. So you can see I have quite a few there. Next in the app is Voice Aware. So this will control how much of your own voice you hear when you're on a phone call. So you can turn that on and pretty much when you're on a phone call, it'll automatically turn the transparency mode on. So you're not screaming like in a quiet environment. Very handy to have. You also have the option to turn off voice prompts. So when you turn noise cancelling or transparency mode on, it'll normally say transparency, noise cancelling. You can change that to a beep instead if you don't want to hear a voice, but the JBL voice, it's pretty nice. Next in there is the audio and video mode to reduce latency. And in my testing, the video mode brings down the latency a tiny bit, but with the audio mode on, I barely notice any latency at all. Now, a pretty new feature to the JBL app is the max volume limiter. So this will only allow you at max volume to go no higher than 85 decibels. So a nice way to protect your hearing if you accidentally turn your volume all the way up, which I've done many times and it's, it's not the nicest feeling. There's also a Find My Buds feature. As long as you're still connected to your earbuds, that'll emit a beeping sound quite loud from the earbuds. So if you dropped it behind a desk or a couch or something, you'll be able to hear where the earbud is. You've also got an auto power off feature and some general support in there and firmware updates. So a solid foundation of features. There's gonna be a couple more as we go up in price as well. But now the question is, which of these buds is gonna be the best for you? And the main contributing factor to that is gonna be the sound quality and how they fit. Now for the price you're paying here, sound quality is excellent. 
you get that classic JBL tuning, nice deep bass, but overall very solid clarity. And the quality of these cheaper bars is not too far off the most expensive pairs. Now with the Wave Flex, since I don't have an e-tip, you're getting bass nowhere near the amount that the Beam and the Buds have. It's just in the nature of an earbud that doesn't have an e-tip. But the Beam and Buds give you deep sub bass that has some nice subwoofer feeling to it, but at the same time, it's not bloated or messy or over the top. The mids and treble are solid as well, so vocals come through clear and the overall clarity is decent. Comparing the two, the Beam has slightly more punch to the bass with forward mids, so the vocals are clearer and you get slightly better clarity. The buds are more V-shaped, so you have more deep sub bass and treble, which is great with any kind of music, but they really shine with trap, dubstep, and electronic music. The Beam work a little bit better with instrumentation, but either way you go, you're in for a good time and the slight sound difference doesn't matter too much because you can just EQ the buds to your liking and get them to a similar type of sound. Here is my Wave Beam EQ, which is actually the same as a Live Pro 2 EQ. The Wave Buds don't really need too much EQ, so the deciding factor between the two here is gonna be the fit. The Beam use regular ear tips and have a slightly deeper feel in the ear canal, where the Buds use oval ear tips and have a slightly more shallow fit. It feels like there's less digging into your ear. With that in mind, the Beam have a more secure fit, at least for me, so I feel more comfortable when using them with weight training and running. The Buds also don't have a lid on the charging case, which is a bit worrisome. I mean, the magnets are super strong, but still a pretty strange choice there. Now, the only reason you would want to go for the Flex is if you just don't like using ear tips. So they're going to give you the best comfort since nothing is digging into your ear canal. You also get the smallest case and the best core quality. And sound wise, like I said, you're not getting bass on the level of the Beam or the Buds, but the overall mid-range clarity and treble, so your high frequency sounds, sound pretty detailed. And you can push a little bit of extra bass out of them in the EQ. This is what I use, but you can only push the driver so much before you start to get distortion at high volumes. No ear tips means the drivers are working over time to push out bass. Either way you go here, it's great value for money. Now that was a long part of the explanation, but now everything's gonna kind of carry over and there'll be some small improvements as we go up in price. So the tune range retails at 149 Australian, 99 US. You get the same types of buds, tune beam, Tune Buds and Tune Flex. Same IP54 dust and water resistance, except the Tune Flex only has an IPX4, so no dust resistance. The Flex has Bluetooth 5.2, but the Beam and Buds have Bluetooth 5.3 with LE audio capabilities. So this is mainly on newer Android phones, which can give you better latency when gaming, battery life, and some audio sharing features. They all use four microphones now, so when you're on a phone call, you're gonna get better clarity, but most importantly, they block out background noise a lot better. Here are the samples so you can hear. All right, so here is the core quality of the JBL Tune Buds. All right, so here is the core quality of the JBL Tune Beam. All right, so here is the core quality of the JBL Tune Flex. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Now, when it comes to battery life, you're actually getting slightly more in each of the pairs. The Beam and Buds also give you slightly faster fast charge. So if you put the Buds in the case for 15 minutes, you're gonna get four hours of playback. The transparency mode is also a lot clearer with less occlusion. And everything in the app stays the same. The only difference now is you have left and right balance, which will work great if you have hearing loss in one ear. And all of these pairs now have active noise cancelling. Now this is middle range noise cancelling, so it's not gonna like completely block out your surroundings, but they do a pretty decent job of blocking out consistent sounds like a fan, chatter in the distance, plane noise. It doesn't work too well with inconsistent sounds like constructions, birds chirping or people talking quite close to you. But here's my noise cancelling ranking with all the earbuds that I have tested. Pause there for a longer look and I do get slightly stronger noise cancelling on the beam since I do get a better seal with them. And the way the buds fit is going to massively affect the noise cancelling strength. So if you can use larger ear tips, that's going to normally give you stronger noise cancelling. So make sure you always try all different sizes of ear tips. The Flex also has noise cancelling, but it only blocks out the slightest amount of sound. The fact they don't have an ear tip just makes it really challenging. But you can attach ear tips to it, which will enhance the noise cancelling and sound quality. Even with the ear tip on, the noise cancelling still is pretty mild, not on the level of the beam or the buds. But the sound enhancement is nice. So you can jump in the app, change the ear tip sound setting, since too much bass will be pushed out with the addition of the ear tip. And the fit of these is kind of a cross between a semi in ear bud and a regular bud with an ear tip. So very comfortable. And the sound quality, even without the ear tip, it's about 10% better than the Waveflex. So if comfort is your priority, these are gonna be the pair to go for. Now the sound of the tuned beam is pretty interesting because the wave beam actually sound better to me, punchier bass, better vocal clarity. The tuned beam sounds solid, but the mid bass is a bit bloated and the vocals are a bit recessed. Here is my EQ setting, which reduces the bloated mid bass, also boosting the mids. And with this, you can get them sounding slightly better than the wave beam. 
The Tune Buds don't need any EQing and are a solid 10% improvement over the Wave Buds. Basically take the Wave V-shaped tuning, slightly improve the clarity and somehow push out even more sub bass. I don't know how JBL did it, but these are gonna be a serious contender for best bass of 2023 in my Earbuds Awards video. So make sure you're subscribed to see that one coming. Now, the only issue with the Tune Buds is the fit is not the most secure. I can still use them when exercising though and they won't fall out. It's just, I need to readjust the buds a little bit more than I would for the beam or the flex. Again, just how they fit me, it's gonna be a little bit different for everyone. Now moving on to the live range of buds. Retail price, 199 Australian, 149 US. You can usually get them well over for 30% off and that goes for all the pairs here today. The naming does change a bit, but it's the same three type of buds. The Live Pro 2 is the upgraded Tune Beam. The Live Free 2 is the upgraded Tune Buds and the Live Flex, the upgraded Tune Flex. You get IPX5 on the Pro 2 and the Free 2, where the Live Flex now goes back to an IP54. The Live Flex has Bluetooth 5.3, but you don't get LE audio. Pro 2 and Free 2, Bluetooth 5.2, so not as future-proof, but still completely fine. You now get wireless charging on all three pairs, and they all have multi-point connections, so you can actually connect two devices to the earbuds at the same time. All you need to do is pause playback on one device before you resume it on your other device. All the pairs also have any -E detection, so this works with some sensors to automatically pause and play your music when you take one or both earbuds out of your ears, and you can choose for that music to resume when you put the earbuds back in your ears. All the cases are also slightly more compact than the previous ranges. You do get less total battery life, but still plenty of battery life. JBL always giving you solid battery. You now get six microphones on all the pairs and the actual core quality pretty close to the tune buds, but here are some samples so you can hear for yourself. I'll also add the Tour Pro 2 in there so you can hear how they sound. All right, so here is the core quality of the JBL Live Free 2. All right, so here is the core quality of the JBL Live Pro 2. All right, so here is the core quality of the JBL Live Flex. All right, so here is the core quality of the JBL Tour Pro 2. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Now the transparency mode, again, slightly improved over the previous range. So clarity slightly better, but the main difference is the reduced occlusion. So now you get a very minimal amount of it. When it comes to noise cancelling, Tour Pro 2 are the best, followed by the Live Pro 2, then the Tune Beam, Live Free 2, and Tune Buds. I was expecting stronger noise cancelling on the Live Free 2, but the Tune Beam sealed better for me, which would probably explain this. The Live Flex noise cancelling, it's still very mild, but it's about twice as strong as a Tune Flex. And the Live Flex doesn't have the optional ear tips, but it doesn't really need them because the bass you're getting here is the best I've ever heard on any semi in ear earbud, and I've tested pretty much all of them. The Wave and Tune Flex struggle with deep sub bass, but the Live Flex has no issues. This is once EQ'd in the app and keeping noise cancelling on also boosts the bass. Now the reigning champion when it comes to semi in ear bass was the AirPods 3, but the Live Flex blows them out of the water when it comes to sub bass. The AirPods still have better clarity, but if you listen to a lot of electronic music, hardstyle, trap dubstep, the Live Flex are gonna be the pair for you. They also utilize spatial audio. So what that'll do, it's kind of push the sound in front of you. So it's kind of like listening to speakers in front of you. Pretty cool. You have some options in there. It creates a slightly strange sound effect, but it's fun to play around with. Another exclusive feature here is Personify 2.0. So it's a hearing test that'll also tailor the sound to how you hear in each individual ear. The only issue with the Live Flex is the fit isn't as comfortable as a wave or tune since the bud is slightly larger. Now the sound quality going from the Tune Beam to the Live Pro 2, not a huge difference. The Pro 2 do need a lot of treble boosting and a little bit of boosting in the mids. But comparing this to my optimal Tune Beam EQ, the Pro 2 sound about 5% better and have slightly more deep sub bass. You also get improved comfort and security of fit since the buds are more compact and they just have great ergonomics. Now going from the Tune Buds to the Live Free 2, again, both don't really need EQing. The Tune Buds have more sparkle in the treble and deep sub bass, Live Free 2, more mid bass and overall clarity is pretty close. Now let's talk about the Tour Pro 2, retail at 329 Australian, 249 US. This is where JBL just goes all out. You get the Personify hearing test, spatial audio from the Live Flex returns and it works even better. Strongest noise cancelling, even more comfortable than the Pro 2. Their best sound quality. So you have a better baseline tuning, which gives you heaps of freedom to make them sound more bass boosted or more balanced. The standout feature though is the Smart Case, which at first I thought was a little bit gimmicky, but once I started actually using it, I could start to see the use of it. You see, you get basics like playing and pause, skipping tracks, adjusting volume, adjusting your ambient controls. But on top of that, you basically get quick access to everything the JBL app has on the case. Now, is all that worth the extra $100 for you? Maybe. But if you just want the best of the best, that's the pair to go for. 
All right, now to tie all this together, let's go through each type of earbud and explain the main differences. And I'll go from cheapest to most expensive. So starting with the Flex range, the Way Flex is gonna be for you if comfort and core quality is a priority at the lowest price. And you still get decent sound for this style of earbud. The Tune Flex has the optional ear tip and you get 10% better sound over the Way Flex, improved core quality, and you get some mild noise canceling now. Now, when you go up to the Live Flex, it's a pretty massive jump up in sound quality, especially with the sub bass. Even better core quality, stronger noise cancelling, add in wireless charging, multi-point connection, any detection, spatial audio, hearing test. You can see that's a pretty big jump up in value. Only issue, comfort not as good as the previous two, but should still be fine for most. Now, onto the Beam Buds, starting with the Wave Beam. This is great if all you need is a secure fit with a punchy and full sound. Only issue is the microphone will let in background noise when you're on a phone call and the transparency mode has a bit of occlusion. Moving up to the tune beam, the call quality gets fixed, the occlusion is slightly reduced, you get the third strongest noise cancelling, longer battery life, and 5% better sound. Moving up to the Live Pro 2, stronger noise cancelling, even better transparency mode, second best comfort, and then the wireless charging, any detection multi-point, 5% better sound again. If you're just looking for an all-rounder that you can't really fault, the Live Pro 2 is the pair to get. And like I said, you can jump up to the Tour Pro 2 if you want to go all out, but the Live Pro 2 still probably have everything you need and the case is more compact as well. That's the only issue with the smart case. It's a bit of a chunky one. Now let's go through the bud range, starting with the Wave Buds. Same situation as the Wave Beam. You just get slightly better comfort with the oval ear tips and more deep sub bass. The Tune Buds though are the standout bud, at least for me when it comes to their sound quality, especially if you like some subwoofer-like bass. You can EQ the heck out of them and they have the craziest subwoofer bass. It sounds like, like, a, like a sub is in your head. Very fun to play around with. Core quality is up there with the best. It's just the noise cancelling is not as strong as the Tune Beam and it's not gonna give you the most secure fit. Moving up to the Live Free 2, you do get a more secure fit. Again, multi-point, wireless charging, any detection, slightly stronger noise cancelling and the improved transparency mode. So let me know what you get. Either way you go with JBL, you're gonna be in for a good time. And if you wanna grab any of the buds mentioned, I've got links down below. Really appreciate if you do use those links. And I appreciate if you check out this video here where I compared the Live Pro 2 to the best of the best with all brands. So check that out. In the meantime, stay picky. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.